to tell you a little bit about my office. So my office really does, is the home of something called the Parent Leadership Training Institute. Mi oficina es la que se donde se hospeda el Instituto para el Liderazgo de Padres, ¿verdad? The reason that's important is because we take a very special view of parents. Nosotros pensamos, we believe, that parents belong at every single table where decisions are being made about their kids. Pensamos que los padres se merecen estar en cualquier mesa donde se están haciendo decisiones para su niño, ¿verdad? Y that's important for a couple of reasons. One, oftentimes, you know, I come from a culture where my mother would drop me off at school and she would hope that everything was being done to educate me in the best way possible. She would hope, but she would never interfere. Never interfere. She thought, that is their job, I'm not a professional. Her thought was, I'm just a parent. Mi madre era una de estas personas que pensaba, ella dejaba, dejaba en la escuela y pensaba, ojalá que están haciendo lo mejor, yo pienso que están haciendo lo mejor para mis niños. Y, y se iba porque decía, yo solamente soy un padre. Right? What, what role do, you have, do I have in ensuring that my child has an education? I don't even know the first thing about what's happening inside of school. ¿Qué rol tengo yo? Yo no sé nada de lo que está, lo que está pasando en la escuela. So my mom would leave me there. What we've learned since, and what we've come a long way uh, in many years that we have devoted to parent leadership and parent civics. And what we've learned is that parents have a vital role in the education of their children. And that's all parents. Tienen un rol vital en la educación de sus niños los padres. And the reason for that is that children learn best when they learn in a context, uh, los niños aprenden mejor en el contexto of family, school, and community. That's when children learn best. They learn best in the context of school, family, and community. And that doesn't matter whether you have a doctorate as a parent or whether you have no education or a fifth grade education because you are the expert when it comes to your kids. Usted es el experto cuando, viene, cuando, se, cuando tiene que ver con sus niños. Y usted tiene que pensar así, yo soy experto en una cosa. Si soy experto de algo, es de una cosa. Y es el bienestar y lo que necesitan mis niños. Now, why is it important to think that way, that you are the expert in, your, in the education and lives of your kids? It's because you are. You know them better than anything. You know how they learn. You learn what motivates them, what makes them sad, what holds them back. You know, and if you're lucky, you have that kind of relationship where you foster that kind of relationship where your children come to you. And they, and, or you, you can sense when something is wrong, something is different, something is special. Usted si tiene una relación con sus niños puede ver cuando algo está pasando. Usted puede sentir lo que están sintiendo sus niños. Eso es muy importante. Por eso es que es importante que ustedes sigan al tanto de lo que está pasando con sus niños. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about something very special, which is the special ed process in the state of Connecticut. And the reason that I wanted to talk to you about that is because oftentimes, especially when it comes to special ed, there's a couple of things that happen in Connecticut uh, that are pretty typical. One, sometimes children are over-referred to special ed when they have specific needs. Lo que pasa en Connecticut es que a veces lo que pasa es que muchos niños se les manda más de lo que se debe a special ed. And it might be for a couple of reasons. Puede ser por una o dos cosas. One, because the child uh, speaks English as a second language. It could also be because, you know, you remember when, cuando éramos niños, when we were kids, uh, our parents, if, if your parents learned it from their parents and learned it from their parents, we learned how to say A is A, ah, B is B, C is C, right? We learned that. But not all, not all parents have the time or the knowledge to do that. They just don't. Some parents are working three jobs. Some parents are busy with other things. Some parents just don't know what phonics and phonemic awareness is. So what happens is that a lot of children come to school not ready to read, not ready to learn to read with those basic fundamental skills for reading, so they're not prepared. So what they need is some interventions. And usually with targeted interventions, children can easily pick up those skills and start learning to read so that they can read to learn. Lo que pasa en algunas familias es que, ustedes se acuerdan cuando éramos niños que se nos decía la A es A, la A se pronuncia A, la B es B, la C es K. Y cuando usted pone esas, esos sonidos juntos, se forman palabras, ¿verdad? 
Pero lo que pasa es que porque algunos padres no tienen tiempo, no tienen capacidad, no, no saben de hacer esto, no se les aprende a los niños, o los niños no saben cómo poder aprender a leer, ¿verdad? And you know that if the kid isn't reading by third grade, they're not learning to read, they're not reading to learn in fourth grade. And that's a huge developmental delay. In fact, a lot of kids who end up in correctional system in that what we call the school to prison pipeline do not have the ability to read by eighth grade. And that's, that's usually a predictor of whether a child will do well. Lo que pasa es que si un niño no sabe cómo leer para el, el, en el cuarto grado, no puede aprender. Porque para esa edad ya tienen que saber leer para poder aprender y poder captar, ¿verdad? Y esos, esos, uh, uh, esa habilidad puede ser en español o en inglés, ¿verdad? Se llama phonemic awareness phonics, poder saber cómo tras, traducir los sonidos a palabras, right? So that's an important skill, how to translate sound into words and concepts. So anyway, so um, that's uh, sometimes children who can't read are also referred to special ed, but all they need is some modest intervention. So it's important that you keep track. It's important that parents be engaged, ask questions of your school, pregunte, haga preguntas. Hoy lo que vamos a aprender, what we're going to learn today is some of those basic things that you can arm yourselves with so that if you do, if you find yourself in a situation where something's different, something's wrong, or I don't know if everything is right, I have a question, you have a right to know. Usted tiene derechos, cuando usted ve que algo no está bien, algo está, es diferente, donde usted puede preguntar, tiene el derecho de preguntar, you have the right to ask, ¿qué se puede hacer para mi niño? What types of interventions are available for me? What is our special ed law? And what does it entitle me to? ¿Qué es lo que usted se merece bajo la ley federal de educación especial? ¿Ah? Así que vamos a empezar. This slide that you see here is my contact information. This is my email, uh, uh, información de contacto. I'd like for you to take it down, take a picture of it, write it down, whatever it is that you do, because I want, and I'm going to leave some of my cards as well. Voy a dejar tarjetas. If you have any questions, I know how it is sometimes. Sometimes you just forget to ask a question, or you go home and you're like, oh my god, I'm wondering about this, or I'm wondering about that. I want you to feel free to contact me. Any questions about education, like I said, I, my commission is the Commission on Women, Children, and Seniors. So I also, if you have questions about um, aging in Connecticut, if you have questions about family issues, any question on policy, please feel free to call me. Usted puede, tiene que saber que en cualquier momento puede dejar mi contacto. Si usted tiene preguntas ya sea de la tercera edad, de familias, de educación, labor, lo que sea, por favor, uh, siéntase um, uh, cómodo en comunicarse con mí. Huh? So should we start? Is my is my going back and forth? Is that good in, in English, English and Spanish? Is it confusing in any way? Is that okay? Okay. All right. Good. English. You know, English is my native language. I learned Spanish when I was four, so it's always been a process for me. So I'm very proud to try and always practice it. But it's not. It's not like my English. All right. Great. So what is special education? ¿Qué es la educación especial? This is very important because we should all know what special education means in the state of Connecticut. Special education is specifically designed instruction to meet the student's unique needs. This is important. Es importante que la educación especial es like es instrucción diseñada especialmente para las neces los necesidades, la necesidad de su niño. It is especially created and tailored for your child. That's critically important. Spe special education is not one size fits all. Never let anyone tell you, oh, this is how we treat our special ed kids. This is what we do for all of our special ed kids. Because that's not the way it works. No es una talla para todos. El special ed es específicamente e individualmente diseñado para sus niños. That's critically important. So one, red, one siren that goes off of your, in your head, oh, we do this for all of our special ed kids. You should ask, well, wait a second. How are you designing specifically for my child's special needs? All right, so that's important to know. Another important thing to know, otra cosa importante saber es que this is a federally protected law. This is not state law, this is federally protected law, right? The state is to implement uh, federal laws. We do get some money from the federal government. Uh, we get resources as well. This is a federal law that protects your kids. Esta es ley federal, así que es ley importante. No es ley del estado de Connecticut solamente. Es ley que es fund, uh, fund, uh, que, que tiene recursos y fondos 
del gobierno federal y, se, y es protegida por el gobierno federal. Eso es muy importante porque no deje usted que el Estado le diga, well, don't let the state say to you, this isn't for you, or we don't do that here, or we don't have special ed in our school. I don't think you'll ever hear that. But if, you ever, if, you ever, if they ever give you pushback, you know, usted sabe que este es su derecho federal. Otra cosa, another thing to know is that special education is designed to be at no cost to you. La educación especial es sin fines de lucro, por supuesto, pero también a usted no le debe costar nada. Eso es importante, because under our laws, under our federal laws, your children are all entitled to special education if they need it. Usted, es, bajo nuestras leyes federales, este, este es algo que le pertenece a sus niños por derecho. Así que usted puede pedirlo así. ¿no? Uh, again, unique, unique for each student, diseñada para cada estudiante. Now, this is a, an incredible thing that I think a lot of parents don't understand. Your engagement in the process of special ed is critical. You are a member of the team. You are involved in the process. Su, usted, el rol del padre y la madre es crítico para este, para este esfuerzo de equipo. Usted tiene que estar en esa mesa. Si se le dice, we've got it covered, if they tell you we've got it. Si se le dice, nosotros sabemos qué hacer, usted no se preocupe. Usted dígale, no, I need to be at this table. No, this is my role as a parent. I am part of the process. So if we could go to the next slide. What are related services? ¿Qué son los servicios relacionados? You know, there's a whole list of related services. I just want you to know that there are services that are related to this work, to special ed. Hay servicios relacionados con este, con este empeño. Servicios que usted se merece, ¿verdad? Esta, esta no es una lista completa. This is not a full list. But this is, these are examples of some of the uh, of some of the services that are provided to your to you and to your child in special ed. Son ejemplos de algunos de los servicios que se les que se les da a usted uh, como parte de los de los beneficios federales. Some of them are speech and language services. I included some of the more popular ones: speech and language services, psychological and counseling services as well, uh, social work services, and parent counseling and training. Why parent counseling and training? Because again. You're an important part of the team, right? So if you need counseling, if you need training on how it is that you manage your child's education and your role in the home and community, it's critically important that you receive training as well. So always ask about that. El, los servicios, alguno de los servicios que se les provee a los padres es servicios de habla y lenguaje, ayudarle a usted a entender, ¿verdad? Comunicarse. Servicios psicológicos y de consejería. Eso es importante porque a veces eso es el, lo que necesitan los niños, ya sea el niño, ya sea la familia. A servicio de trabajo social y consejería también. Trabajo social, sometimes, lo que pasa a veces es que no hay suficiente nutri uh, nutrición para los niños, uh, algo que les falte, esos servicios se les propone hacer. Y capacitación parental. This is incredibly, incredibly important. Capacitación parental porque como usted es miembro del equipo, se le tiene que, ellos quieren asegurar que usted tenga todo lo que necesite para estar involucrado en este sistema. They, the government wants to ensure that you have all of the resources that you need to be an active participant in this system. That's critically important. Next slide. Ahora, who's eligible? ¿Cuál es la elegibilidad? Esa es una palabra difícil. Elegibilidad para sus niños. Sus niños tienen que estar de los 3 a los 21 años. 3 a 21 años. Uh, your children must be between uh, 3 and 21 years old. Now, why 3? Because before three, we have the birth to three system, which helps care for, which helps be your support system if you need it. Uh, birth to three is a very strong system. It's also a federally funded system. Uh, the state of Connecticut's birth to three uh, program has really been elevated in the last few years through the creation of our state office of early childhood. That is another right that parents have. El sistema de, de, de nacer hasta los tres años aquí en Connecticut es un sistema muy buen de, bien desarrollado, uh, especialmente con, con uh, la institución de la oficina de, de niños uh, que se crió hace unos años. So this is a very important system, birth to three. Sometimes it is the reason that children have the best chance of being able to develop appropriately and at the time that they should because birth to three really helps parents help themselves, and that's important. And birth to three les ayuda a los padres a realizar los mejores fines para sus niños, en capacitarle a usted con todo lo que necesita. So that's why birth to three is important, and that's why it starts at three years old. 
three to 21 years old. 21 is the cutoff age for a lot of these uh, for special ed because after 21, what happens is you move from the childhood system to the Department of Social Services system. I hope that there's another system that, that helps uh, children and people with long-term disability, with long-term need. Uh, so it's a matter of a changing of systems. Some people say it's not seamless. In fact, it is very difficult, and I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that the state is perfect. In fact, it's not. In fact, what I am here to tell you is to expect that the state is not perfect. And sometimes, your parents, you have to be fighters. You have to be fighters on behalf of your kids. You know to do that and, and feel, feel confident and free to understand that in these systems, they're not always geared to have you at the table, and they're not always geared to have your children's best interests in mind in the way it works out. So be the fighter on behalf of your kids. Lo que le estaba contando es que los sistemas, yo no estoy aquí para decirle que los sistemas estatales son perfectos, porque no lo son. A veces lo que pasa es que no están diseñados, no solamente para usted, ¿verdad? Están diseñados de manera que tienen otros fines en mente. Así que usted a veces tiene que pelear por los derechos de sus niños y siéntese que tiene usted el derecho de pelear por esos, uh, por esos bienes. Um, the disability, so these are some of the, the prerequisites, right? First, the age. Your child must have one or more disabilities as determined by federal law. Eso es importante. Su hijo debe tener una de las discapacidades determinadas por la ley federal. There's a long list of them, right? And there's going to be a link at the end that I'm going to, I'm, I'm also going to make this PowerPoint available. But there is a long list of disabilities that the federal government recognizes as those disabilities that, that make you eligible for, uh, uh, for this intervention, for special ed. Um, it's important that you know that it's not just that the, this list is not exhaustive. It's, esta lista no es completa. Hay una lista completa para esa elegibilidad. Pero es importante saber que puede ser una de esas disabilidades o puede ser varias. Así que hay una lista. Pregunta por la lista. What is the list? Ask for it. Ask your school. I want to make sure that my child, if my child does have a specific disability, that they have the coverage and the health that they need. Um, the disability must adversely affect your child's educational performance. Uh, the child requires a specially designed instructional program to address their unique educational needs. That is a key term, unique educational needs. Why? Because no one size fits all. Um, en, en español, la discapacidad debe afectar negativamente el desempeño educativo del menor. Su hijo requiere de un programa educativo especialmente diseñado, diseñado para atender sus necesidades educativas únicas. Esto es, otra vez les repito, es importante que no hay un, uh, un, una talla para todos los niños, tiene que ser única y diseñada para su niño específicamente. ¿no? Uh, eligibility will be redetermined every three years, cada tres años, every three years, cada tres años se le redetermina para ver si el niño todavía necesita la intervención. Every three years it will be reevaluated. Like I said, sometimes the disability can be developmental. Sometimes it can be experiential, right? It can be temporary, a temporary disability that requires a specific intervention. So it's important that you reevaluate with your, uh, with the professionals to make sure that you're still getting the services that you need. Cada tres años. A veces esa disabilidad puede ser um, específica, puede ser temporal. Así que cada tres años se reevalúa. Huh? Next slide. Now this is a very small slide, I'm so sorry for that. Uh, what is referral to special, what is a referral to special education? ¿Qué es un referido a educación especial? This is important, you know, this is very specific, but I wanted you to know that there is a referral process, right? And a referral process is essentially the process by which an identification is made, right? And who refers, who does it? And what does it mean that your child is referred? This is important, who can refer your child? El referido es importante porque esto es lo que empieza, this is what begins the process of special ed, esto es lo que empieza el, el proceso de la educación especial, así que es importante saber cómo es que se puede referir un niño, how is it that you can refer a child to special ed, who can do it, cómo se hace, quién puede hacerlo. Esto es importante porque este es derecho suyo, pero alguien también pueda uh, evaluar a su niño y pueda referir a su niño también porque ellos ven que es importante, right? So who can refer? El estudiante, right? Remember the coverage is up until age 21. So who can refer? The student can refer if they're 18 and over. Uh, si un niño tiene 18 años, es mayor de 17 años, mayor de 17 años, el niño puede des, um, um, uh, 
Mm -hmm. Referirse a sí mismo, and say, I, am, I feel that I have a special ed need. Um, a parent guardian or a surrogate parent, un padre, madre, tutor, uh, padre substituto, puede referir usted, puede referir, you have the right to have your child referred. Um, if somebody else refers a child, they have to give you notice. So you have the right to know that your child has been referred. Now, why is that? Why do you have the right to notice? ¿Por qué tiene usted el derecho de saber si alguien más ha referido a su niño? The reason that's important is because you need to be at the table. So they can't refer blindly, and they have to tell you that they've done it. Usted tiene que estar en esa mesa, así que se le tiene que dar a notificar de que han referido a su niño. ¿no? Uh, also, another thing is that school personnel, uh, la escuela puede también referir, and also birth to three. So remember I talked about birth to three. If in birth to three it is determined that your child has special needs, they can make the referral to the, to the school system once your child goes into daycare. Si en birth to three, que es esa, um, ese sistema federal que cuida a los niños más pequeñitos, si ellos determinan también que hay una necesidad especial, ellos pueden referir a su niño al sistema. Así que there is a community, hay una comunidad of people who are waiting who are listening, who are paying attention, and who are experts, and who can see, huh, something's not right here. You're part of that community, you can do that too. Usted es parte de la comunidad de expertos como usted, que puede referir y todos están al tanto cómo está desarrollando su niño y qué es lo que necesita. So, next slide. ¿Qué es lo que sucede? Uh, what, what happens when a referral is made in special ed? This is the next step. Once that referral happens, once the child self-identifies as a young adult, or you identify your child, cuando usted refiere al niño, o cuando el niño refiere, ¿qué es lo que pasa? What happens next? Right? ¿Qué es lo primero que pasa? Lo primero que pasa es que se notifica, you get notice to participate as a member of the school's planning and placement team. Planning and Placement Team, the PPT, eso es lo que se llama el PPT, ¿verdad? Usted se le notifica, uh, uh, se le notifica pidiéndole participar como miembro del equipo planificación y ubicación. Now, why is that important that you get noticed to, to be involved? Because again, you're now being made part of the team. You're being involved in the team making decision that is special education for, for your child. Always remember that, that notice is critical. ¿Por qué es importante? Porque ahora usted es parte del equipo para, para um, uh, para planificar ubicación, para crear ese sistema personal para usted. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to review existing uh, evaluation information. They're going to show you what led them to believe that your child may have special needs. Se le van a enseñar esa información que ellos han visto, han captado para, para saber que su niño pueda tener necesidades especiales. They're going to determine whether there's a need for any additional data or information. They're going to decide, they're going to see, do we need to know more? Should we send to a specialist? Let's figure out together, van a determinar si hay necesidad para mayor información, si tiene que mandarse un especialista. Eso es importante del proceso para ver específicamente, to see specifically what your child may need, it's an important part of the process. Ahora, again, if I, si hay una cosa que quiero que se acuerden, if there's one thing I want you to remember, your participation in this process is critically important. Su participación es importante, críticamente. Uh, next slide. What is a planning and placement team? Que es este equipo que se ha creado, right? Quiero que usted sepa qué es lo que hace el, el, um, el, el equipo. El planning and placement team re reviews referrals to special education, determines if your child needs to be evaluated, decides, I put all of these here because I wanted you to know that these are the steps of the PPT. The, the PPT team, the, um, the planning and placement team, they make all of the decisions. You're part of that team. Those are critical decisions for the short and long term that you need to be part of. Esas decisiones que, que el, el, el equipo hace son decisiones muy importantes para el corte plazo, pero también para, que, para la duración del, de la necesidad. Así que es importante que usted sepa todo lo que usted tiene que saber aquí. You're an equal member of the team. Eso es lo más importante. Usted tiene derecho que es igual a los demás en el equipo. You're an equal member of the team. You have the same rights as a psychologist does in the team. You have the same rights as a doctor has in the team, a, a school professional. You get to ask questions. You get to demand the answers. Usted puede hacer preguntas y puede demandar respuestas. Porque usted es parte del equipo. Next slide. Esto fue lo que les expliqué. Next slide, please. Ahora, el IEP. 
el IEP que se le llama, the IEP, the Individualized Education Program. This is important. There are a couple of things that I wanted to highlight about the IEP for you, uh, because again, this is going to be tailored specifically for your child. If your child is determined to be eligible for special ed after the process, uh, you will begin the team process of developing an IEP, which is an individualized education program. You know, I have a theory, and I have a, this is just the way that I see the world, but I think that every child should have an individualized, edu uh, individualized education program because of all the different ways that we know that children learn. But at least for children with special education needs, it is a federal requirement that it be that way. Um, en, en mi pensamiento yo, yo pienso que cada niño debe tener un plan individual para aprender, para aprendizaje, pero por lo menos para los niños que tienen esas necesidades especiales, ese es, una, es un requisito federal. Así que cada niño tiene que tener su plan. Um, some of the IEP elements that I want you to remember is that there are goals here that have to be set. That's critically important. Uh, any modifications or, uh, or accommodations for your children need to be spelled out and provided to you. That's critically important too. And also time. They need to tell you when, when this will begin, how long it's going to last. And finally, any transition service needs. So transition service needs, one example of that may be transitioning from being a child in the system with very special needs, especially high level special needs, maybe uh, autism spectrum uh, with um, with lower ability or even autism spectrum with high ability but well, just difficulty getting around. Uh, transferring into the adult system, those transition needs can be very difficult. Transitioning in and out of the IEP process as well, uh, those are all the needs that you might experience. Uh, next slide. Um, ahora, ¿qué es el, el, el programa educativo individualizado? Esto es importante, ¿verdad? Porque hay algunos elementos que quiero que ustedes sepan uh, si se determina que su hijo necesita este tipo de intervención. Primeramente, se tienen que formar metas educativas, porque este, el, en fin, the reason for this, el, 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 la meta aquí es que eh, su niño va a aprender, ¿verdad? Que va a poder lograr el sistema educativo, right? The goal here is that your kids can learn. So there have to be goals that are, that are specifically laid out for educational attainment. Tiene que hablarse también de modif cualquier ma modificaciones y adaptaciones que su niño va a necesitar específicamente se le tiene que determinar y tiene que, que, que um, contársele a usted para que usted sepa lo que va a pasar. La fecha que van a comenzar uh, lo, las intervenciones, cuánto va a durar, cuánto plazo, esto puede ser por vida, puede ser por unos dos años, todo depende. Uh, y cualquier necesidad de servicios de trans, transición, como les conté antes, esa transición de niños a adultos, al sistema adulto, si es que hay esas necesidades también. So those are, the, those are the key elements of what is critical in an IEP. Next slide, please. Oh, if there's key takeaways, if there's anything that I want you to, to leave here with. Equitable access, el acceso, uh, equi, equi, um, el, el acceso equitativo es su derecho. Equitable access is your right. And just remember that. It's your right, it's your child's right, and it's your right to demand it. Parental participation in the PPT and IAP process is critical. Su participación es crítica. Es sumamente importante. ¿Por qué? Porque usted es el experto. You are the expert in your child's ability. Uh, and your school is here to help you. La escuela está aquí para ayudarlo. That's incredibly important to understand too, because oftentimes what we experience as parents is that the school says, we've got this. We've got this. You'll be fine. Come next year for the parent-teacher conference. That's not the way it should work. The way it should work is the school is here to help you. You fund it as taxpayers, you fund it as members of community, the federal government resources it as well. La escuela es, es um, los fondos que encuentra la escuela son federales, son estatales, pero, pero lo, que, lo que es importante saber aquí es que la escuela es para usted y está aquí para ayudarle a usted y, y, y no excluirlo del, del proceso. So those are the key takes, takeaways. I, I would love to, any questions that you have about this, any questions that you have more generally about educational opportunity, cualquier pregunta que usted tenga, I would love to field them. Even some of, the, some of the experts here, I'd love to field whatever questions you may have. Um, I live and breathe this stuff every day and it's a lot of fun. It can be very frustrating too, as you can imagine. Es frustrante a veces este trabajo porque hay mucho que hacer y hay mucha necesidad 
there's a lot of need, there's a lot to do, but it's also very important work because of your kids. That's what we care about. So, gracias. Voy a traducir la pregunta sí, primero sí, y luego, sí. ah, sí, no, luego claro. le doy una respuesta, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. So, what's interesting about this, this is a great question because it's actually pretty emblematic, right? Um, her daughter experienced, me permite decirlo de esta manera, ¿verdad? Her daughter experienced a brain operation early, early on. It was a very serious operation. Uh, it, I, I can't tell, but it sounds like the operation itself may have caused some hearing loss, or at least there's some hearing loss, some substantial hearing loss in one ear. So the question was, you know, in that situation, you know, her daughter is enjoying the school environment, but sometimes she has trouble hearing and it frustrates her and she doesn't know whether or not she should speak up or say anything. So um, my response there would be, and I love your encouragement because what mom said to encourage her daughter is, uh, is you know, do just the way that we help you here, find someone you trust there and say to them, look, this is what's going on, I would love your help on it, right? So the only thing I would I would add to that, and I think that's great advice, right? There's always the, the, the advice of self-help, the child being able to speak and feel confident uh, that they uh, that someone has their back. The only thing I would add to that is that there's a role for a parent as well, right? As we said before, the role of the parent is critical. And the fact that the fact that the child has been tested, right, and they can't quite determine what the issue is. That shouldn't stop you, right? Ask the questions, maybe get a, a second opinion, get retested. If the child isn't hearing completely, si, si su niña no está oyendo completamente, es importante, ¿verdad? Que usted siga preguntando, uh, uh, quizá buscar otro especialista, ¿verdad? Todo esto se le merece porque lo que está pasando, esa frustración está causando que su niña no aprenda, ¿verdad? That frustration that her child is experiencing is causing her to not be able to learn the inability to hear. So uh, get a second opinion, get a specialist opinion, work with your school, say to them, look, my daughter's telling me she can't hear, she's not experiencing the educational environment fully, what can we do about it? And sometimes it might be a medical intervention, sometimes it might be an intervention in practice, right? A veces puede hacer una intervención médica, pero a veces solamente en cambiar cómo es que hacen las cosas, La, la maestra o el maestro estar un poco más cerca de ella, es que depende, ¿verdad? Sí, Pero usted como padre demanda. Sí, porque ella me dice, yo nunca había estado en una escuela donde los profesores me, me entienden y me, y me aman, dice ella. Porque ya ha pasado muchas dificultades y ella está muy contenta con todos los profesores. Es lo mismo que le digo a veces ella. Qué lindo ir eso, ¿verdad? Porque sí. a veces lo que pasa es que la, el sistema no, no le responde al niño, ¿verdad? el niño se siente no solamente frustrado, pero también desconectado. En este caso, parece que su niño está teniendo éxito, le gusta, ¿verdad? Le están ayudando. Sí. Nomás le falta un poquito, ¿verdad? What's really great to hear is that um, her daughter is actually having a very good experience. She feels heard, she feels seen, right? The only problem is that sometimes she can't. 
here. So it's important for her to have a full experience for you to follow up on that. But thank you for your example. That's the person. Yeah, just a quick question. I also have a son with the exit and an IEP in top of work. Yeah. But I understand that sometimes when there's not clarification from from testing, they it could they could be identified as something, but it's really something else. Because he was he was identified under speech and language. I mean as speech under speech for, and not being like struggling with reading, that ended up being executive functioning afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then with a lot of social work and stuff uh, and supports. He's doing very well in high school right now. Very well. But I can see how, in this case, it could be, you know, that she, they may identify her as something, but it ends up being something else. Que interesante. So remember, that's a, that's a great uh, example. If you remember, one of, the, one of the bullets was determining whether we need more information. Yeah. That's critically important. So um, la pregunta era, a veces se le puede determinar que su niño tiene un problema, pero realmente es otro. Así que es importante pedir más información, tener mayor información. Always ask, wait a second, have we done this evaluation? Have we looked into this? Have we looked into that? Can I know more? Are there other tests? Because sometimes the issue isn't that your child is dyslexic or has dyslexia. Sometimes the issue is that your child just needs modest interventions in early literacy, right? But if your child is identified and no one checks or tests again or tests in a different way, that identification could stay with them and actually make it worse. Uh, si su niño es misidentificado, ¿verdad? Esa identificación puede quedarse con su niño y le puede afectar peor. Lo bueno es que usted no solo le hicieron la identificación, pero se la revaluaron y tuvo éxito su niño. That's incredibly important in her case. Not only did they, were they able to redetermine, right, that there was a, a special, a different need rather than the one that was originally diagnosed, but that's what's, that's what's been, that's what's empowered your son to have a better experience. So it's heartening, but then again, you see the important role of the parent in saying, wait a second, can we do a different test or is there something else? Because I don't think this is right, right? If your spidey senses, si su, uh, si usted está pensando aquí algo no está bien, if your spidey senses are going off and you think, Something's not right here, go with it. Go with it. Because your instincts as a parent are stronger than any instinct of any other profession. And you know, and that's really important. I, and I hope, you know, that idea of being in, in an environment, a school environment, where your child feels accepted and where your child feels like they have to be the, the, not only the capacity to learn, but also the space in which that learning is encouraged is incre incredibly important. Um, you know, it's not often that way, and there are and sometimes, you know, you have to fight for it, but that's why you're here and that's why we're here. So. Any other questions? That's a, that's a really important point because that's the that's why this is an individualized program. That's why this is a unique program to, the, to your needs, and that's why there's constant reevaluation for the reason that you just said. A veces la la la, la desabilidad o las habilidades de, la, de las personas desarrollan, crecen, cambian. Así que por eso es importante la revaluación, ¿verdad? Y la comunicación constante para para ver. Cómo ha cambiado, qué ha cambiado, qué desarrollo uh, hemos visto y cómo podemos ayudar de manera diferente. One thing to remember, I didn't put it in the slides, but um, there is also help and in individualized educational plans for children who are very gifted. Uh, so it's important to learn to know that because a veces los niños que son muy inteligentes también se les tiene que ayudar. Uh, kids, who, kids who are high, um, 
uh, highly skilled also sometimes need interventions as well. It could be for different reasons. It could be on the spectrum and they could just be you know, little walking geniuses. Or they could just um, have advanced learning capability. But sometimes they need help too. A veces ellos también necesitan ayuda. Así que acuérdense después de eso. Any other questions? Your bilingual mind is amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm, I'm bilingual too, but I wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, you're like you're co-switching is so yeah. No, I am, can I tell you something? Les confieso algo que a mí me da mucho, se me da mucha pena porque mi español no es como mi inglés. My Spanish is not to the level of my English. So I get, I get, I, I'm embarrassed by it, especially at home, but I really appreciate you saying that. That's really, that's really nice. Well, for those of us that don't speak Spanish, you're amazing. So. <laughs> um, I want to thank you all for coming. I'm in no hurry, but I know that families are important and there's people waiting for you. So if you have any questions, we'll just take one or two. Yeah, I'll hang around. But, but please, if you need to go, I know what, I know what that's like. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate the invitation. Anytime. <laughs>